Welcome to the Insurgents Podcast with Frank Viola. And he's brought a friend. This is the podcast that supplements Frank's groundbreaking book, Insurgents, Reclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom, which is shaking up the Christian world. You can find out details about the book at insurgents.org. Sit back, open all four ears, physical and spiritual, and join the insurgents. Here's Frank. Welcome to another edition of the Insurgents Podcast. Which number is it, Frankie? Ben? <laughs> I lost count, uh, Benzel, I lost okay. count. Well, the last one was like 7,419. Something like yeah, that. So yeah. It's up there. It's up there. It's up there. And uh, again, if you're new to the podcast, you'll want to go back and listen to the previous thousands of episodes. Hallelujah. Because they all build on one another, don't mm. they? Yes, 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 they do. They really, truly are connected. They really do. I'm excited about listening to uh, the podcast he did with Michael Heiser, just some of the interviews. And i uh, still got to go back and listen to a few of the episodes that you did with uh, Brother John, too. So, you know, one thing that's great about these podcasts is that uh, I can binge on them and I can go back and listen to, to previous ones. And I don't have to listen to them once. I can listen to them two, three, four times. I want to read, before we open up, the question we're going to answer. Okay. I want to read James one twenty seven, And this is from the... New American Standard before it was revised. And I'd love to hear what it says in your version of the Bible, which you have the NIV. Okay. But in James 127, the New American Standard before it was revised says, This is pure and undefiled religion. Now, when James uses this term religion, that's translated religion, he's talking about spirituality. He's talking about walking Amen. with the Lord. He's not talking about a religion as we use it today, Mm. like a world religion. This is pure and undefiled religion or spirituality in the sight of our God and Father to visit orphans Mm -hmm. and widows Mm -hmm. in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Mm. What does yours say? So I'm reading the NIV here, Frankie V, and it says in James 1.27, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. I think other translations use the word unspotted Mm. from the world. So we have unstained, Mm -hmm. to keep oneself from being stained by the world, Mm -hmm. unstained by the world, unspotted from the world, or unpolluted from the world. And that's an important text to begin this episode because the question is, what is foot washing in the New Testament, particularly in the Gospels? What is foot washing? What is its meaning? How do we practice it? And how does it relate to the kingdom of God? Amen. So I want to read the text here from John 13, beginning with verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come back forth from God, and was going back to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments. And taking a towel, he girded himself about. Mm -hmm. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. And so he came to Simon Peter. He said to him, Lord, he, meaning Peter, said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not realize now, but you shall understand hereafter. Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Mm. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. (laughs) Jesus said to him, He who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. Mm. He's referring to Judas. Judas. For he knew the one who was betraying him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. And so when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, 
do you know what I have done to you? Mm -hmm. You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, neither is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed. If you do them, that's verse 17. Many people have commented on this text, and I think the overwhelming majority would say that this is a display of humility. Mm -hmm. uh, washing a person's feet is, in effect, taking on the posture of a servant, a slave. You are debasing yourself, humbling yourself, mm -hmm. and lifting someone else up. And I think that's all true. Yes. But I think we have here another meaning that, for me at least, resonates the most. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, when you are in the position that the disciples were in, they wore sandals. That's right. So they're walking around the villages, the towns, the streets, the dirt roads... And when you're doing that with sandals, you can't help but get dust and dirt on your feet. That's right. Your feet are going to collect dust and dirt. They're going to be tarnished. They're going to be polluted. Amen. I'm with you. All right. Now, what is washing? Washing is the removal of dirt, mm -hmm. the removal of dust, the removal of film. It is to bring about the original freshness. All right, that's good. It's to bring yeah. about the original cleanliness, mm. right? Yeah. Because you're removing the film, mm. the dirt, the dust from the feet, if we yeah. talk about washing a person's Word feet. Word restoration comes in my mind. Yes. Yeah. You're being restored to yeah. the original, original yeah. cleanliness. All right. The yeah. original freshness. Mm -hmm. So consequently, when we are believers... We are clean. The Lord cleanses us Amen. by the Holy Spirit, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. I'm with you. We are purified. Mm -hmm. Just like Jesus said to the disciples, you're already clean. You've been bathed. Mm -hmm. But when you walk in the world. Come on now. In your sandals. Mm -hmm. Your feet collect dust and That's dirt right. and filth. From touching the earth. From touching the world. Touching the world. So yes. here... Think about the image. All right. Let's exegete the image. Come on. You're Christian. You're clean. You're pure. The Lord has made you spotless mm -hmm. by the blood of Christ. When you're walking in the world, you're rubbing elbows with worldly people. Mm -hmm. You're being exposed to the world. You may work at a job and you've got people around you cussing and telling dirty jokes mm -hmm. and talking about inappropriate things. You, you look at a billboard and it's just presenting a, an ungodly image. You're in a restaurant, you hear a song that comes on that speaks of ungodly things, mm -hmm. inappropriate things, and things that are impure. You're watching a TV show, and now you get flooded with these commercials that are ungodly. What's happening? You are being spotted by the world. By the world. You're picking up dust. Your feet are collecting dust and dirt. Right? Because you're walking in the world. You can't mm -hmm. help but walk in the world and not pick up, some pick up something of the world That's on right. your feet. Now, That's you're right. still clean. Your whole body's clean. That's right. But your feet get dirty. But your feet get dirty. And so now the Lord says, wash one another's wash, feet. Wash so here you feet. are, Jeffrey. You know, mm -hmm. you're working out. You're in the world. You are around unbelievers. Mm -hmm. You're getting exposed to people's sinfulness. Mm -hmm. And then... You come visit me, and you're down, man. You don't have that joy that you once did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just picked up some dirt on your yes, feet, yes. right? Uh -huh. And so now I'm in a position come on. where I've spent time with the Lord. Uh -huh. My spirit is strong. Mm -hmm. I have joy, contentment. And now I just speak to you and I minister to you. Yes. And I encourage you and I remind you who you are and I remind yeah. you who the Lord is. And I, I just I share some things the Lord showed me that morning. And all of a sudden, man, it's like I'm washing your feet. Yeah. The dust yeah. and the dirt are being removed. You're being refreshed. 
you're being restored to the original mm. freshness. Revitalized. Uh, you're being unspotted yeah. from the world. You're being unpolluted. Yeah. You're being unstained, man. Mm. And I'm washing your feet. Amen. And then the next week, I'm really going through it. You uh -huh. know, I have to deal with some people. They're not Christians. They're giving me a hard time. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a business transaction or something. And uh, and then I'm hearing this music that they got going on in the background, and it's explicit in its lyrics. And I'm just feeling down, man. And I come home, and I'm down. I call you on the phone. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? And you say, oh, man, the Lord showed me this today. And the Lord blessed me with this. And, man, he's so good. And, and then you share with me some insights that he's given you. And all of a sudden... I feel the water, yeah, man. Yeah, come on. I feel the water on my feet, man. Yes, getting that yes, dust off, yes. getting that dirt off. You know what yes. I'm saying? I'm coming back to the original freshness, that original cleanliness. Yeah. And my spirits are lifted. Get and revived. now now I'm being restored. Yes. And there's joy coming to me. Yes. That's what washing That's what the is. feet yes. of the disciples is, yes. I believe. That's what it is, yeah. You know, and, and there's there's so much, uh, there is confusion about what that is. And, you know, you just said it. Like, I couldn't say that any better. All I can say is amen, somebody. Amen, but, somebody. Uh, but, yeah, you know. Forget about it. So, yeah, forget about it. So, you know, Jesus says, uh, answered, and uh, no, said Peter, in verse 8, John 13, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And then Peter, you know, and then says, then Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. <laughs> you know, and he says, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And what I really even love about, you know, that pericope there is, is that he washes Judas's feet too, mm. you know. And so to wash somebody's feet in the body of Christ who maybe had betrayed me or maybe is going to betray me, you know. We still do that in hopes that that person, as you say, gets restored back to that original condition. And we do get spotted by the world. And so the, the nexus for me with uh, the book Insurgents, since this is the Insurgents podcast, is that, yeah, we, you know, we, we've been called out of the world into God's eternal purpose. But as you said, we still have interactions with the world that dirty us, that leave us spotted by the world. You know, I, I worked at, as a chaplain at a Christian rescue mission in the city of Philadelphia. And so part of my job was uh, to have men on my caseload that I, I would counsel and do a one-hour session with every man, you know, every week. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, and, and I'm sure you, you, you guys out here, you insurgents can sympathize or, or have had this situ uh, situation before. Did you ever have a conversation with somebody that was just uh, so uh, explicit and lurid that you felt like you needed to take a shower afterwards? Like, I just need to be refreshed and take a hot shower. And, and so that's I, I've had that happen. And, and so when I would have that experience, I could go to another chaplain, brother in the Lord, and just kind of bear my heart to them. And then they would be in that place, like you said, where they would wash my feet, you mm. know, just, just cleanse me and just encourage me and just strengthen me and just restore me back to my original condition. And then maybe the next day or the next yeah. week, it was like the same way with them. And that is so much like the life of Christ yes. living through us, ministering to one another, you know, because isn't that what he's done to us? He's, he's restoring us back to God's original intention for humanity. Mm. He's restoring us back, you know, uh, to who we are in him. You know, he, he received us and he saved us and, you know, he gives us his nature. And now we do that to one another, as you said. And, and that's what he says, you know. And so I've been in some tribes when, you know, the Lord uh, first drew me to himself where, you know, we did f actual foot washing every other Friday we'd have all night prayer and a part of that was like washing each other's feet and you know unfortunately in my ignorance I would brag that you know I wash such and such as feet <laughs> and how humble I am that I got <laughs> yeah. down with some soap and water and washed their feet. Your modesty prevents you yeah. from telling us how humble you are <laughs> Yeah and so you know but as you just just exegeted that so excellently 
is that we're watching one another because we get spotted by the world and we want to live lives that are unspotted by the world but every day we're in contact with the world it's inevitable and so we help to restore one another in christ through washing one yeah. another's feet. I just Amen. love it. I love Amen. it. I love you it. know, just to make a point here, there's nothing wrong with physically washing a person's feet. Yeah, I've done that before. That. I've yeah. had it done yeah. with me. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld, yeah, they're breaking yeah. up. But I think yeah. the real spiritual meaning here yeah. is spiritual. Yes. Is, is symbolic of what Jesus was doing. And I, I think a beautiful expression taking the picture that jesus gave Mm. of literally washing his disciples feet and making it a literal statement is in hebrews 3 12 where the writer says take care brethren lest there be in any of you an evil unbelieving heart in falling away from the living god now that's interesting that's addressed to believers Mm -hmm. right he's not talking to non-christians he's talking to god's people Take care, brethren, lest there be in any of you, in any one of you, an evil, unbelieving heart in falling away from the living God. Well, what's the antidote to that? Mm -hmm. What is the remedy to that? Verse 13, but encourage one another day after day. Encourage one another. Encourage. And that's what foot washing is. And later he says, lest you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Yes. Another place where he echoes the same thought is in Hebrews 10, verse 13. 24 where the writer says let us consider how to stimulate one another Mm. to love and good works not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another amen and all the more as you see the day drawing near that's foot washing amen encouraging one another ministering refreshment Mm -hmm. restoration yes to one another to one another Uh, washing the feet because we are going to collect the dirt from the world just by being in the world amen just like if you know we had sandals on we took a walk out here Mm -hmm. in orlando florida on the grass on the dirt trail we would collect collect that which is in the world and that's what happens when we are in the world and to wash one another's feet is to remind one another we're not of the world or from the world That's right. And so it's a beautiful message. It's a beautiful illustration that the Lord gave us. And let me just say this too about (laughs) verse 25, not forsaking our own assembling together. Many people have used that to say you got to come to church on Sunday. you got to come and listen to the pastor preach. Mm -hmm. Now, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's not what the writer of Hebrews has in mind. Because they didn't sit and listen to somebody preach That's right. you know, on a Sunday morning, mm-hmm. week after week, month after month, year after year. They assembled together to encourage one another. another. To encourage right? one another. It was mutual yeah. encouragement mutual. that went on in their assemblies. Yes. It yes. was mutual exhortation. And I, I've given the example to kind of show how this was different from what most of us know as assembling together. Mm-hmm. We come in. We sit down, we listen to the preacher preach, and if somebody (laughs) took this scripture literally Mm -hmm. and wanted to encourage their brothers and sisters in that congregation during that preaching time, Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, there would be snipers in the balcony ready to take them out. (laughs) Uh, There's a place for preaching, Uh, don't get me wrong. There There are ministry meetings, there are meetings. All I'm doing is pointing out that in the first century, they encourage one another, encourage and that was their assembling together. Yeah. yeah, and you know, like, a couple things, Frankie V, is like, in the context where Jesus is doing this, right, John 13, verse 1, it says, it was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to, to leave this world and, and go to the Father. So he knows that, mm. you know, the cross is fast approaching. He's, yes. he's going to have this time in the Garden of Gethsemane where he's praying, you know, three hours total. So what he does, he, he's got all the weight of all the sin and, and the wrath of God getting ready to be poured out on him. And then he goes in and serves the brethren. Mm. He does one another. I stumbled on this, you know, by the grace of God one day. Some years ago, I was just very discouraged for a couple days, mm. really. And uh, I ran into a brother in the Lord, and he was more discouraged than I was. 
And so, you know, I'm an encourager. That just comes natural to me anyhow by God's grace. And, and so I began to encourage him and talk about the goodness of the Lord. And as I listened to myself talking to him, I got encouraged, <laughs> you know. And so I had, got, I, I had gotten spotted by the world and I was dealing with that. And I started to see like, wow, sometimes when, you know, I'm going through, if uh, the Lord will bring somebody across my path that, you know, I can be an encouragement to them. I read in the book of Proverbs where the writer says uh, that he who waters shall be watered. And so when you're watering someone else and, you know, there's water again, and we can relate that to the Holy Spirit and washing and cleansing and revitalization and restoration. Mm. When you're doing that with somebody else, it happens to you too. Yes, you back. know, it comes back to you too, you know. And so, you know, Jesus is doing that to the disciples. And I think that that, you know, that principle worked, you know, even, even in his own humanity. And so just doing that, and that one another, and I, I like that, how, how you said that in there. And so I also relate that to the kingdom cells. You know, yes, the, amen, the brother, brother. The brother that We're I get each to, other's feet. Yeah, themselves. yeah, in the kingdom cells. I mean, uh, you know, the brother that uh, I get a chance to uh, do the kingdom cell with, we sit and it's just like there's just so much encouragement that the Holy Spirit does just between the two of us. Just sharing Christ with one another that uh, I tell him that every time I leave his presence, it's like I've had a shot of espresso, you know, uh, <laughs> spiritual, and, espresso, spiritual espresso, like an IV of it straight into my veins, you know, because I just feel so refreshed, so revitalized, so renewed. It's a revival happens in my soul. And I just so love, you know, that brother so much. And, and then we pray for one another. We pray for our spouses. We pray for our children. We pray for the fellowships that we both belong to. And then we pray for, you know, the believers, you know, around the world. Because this brother, for five or six years, was a missionary in China. And he just shares some stories about that experience. So this, this one anothering and the priesthood of all believers, and I believe that this part of our priesthood is as all believers to, to strengthen and encourage each other because we do get spotted by the world. Yes. And in that refreshing and cleansing of one another, and I go back to that, that verse in Proverbs, he who waters shall be watered. It reminds me of the passages all about baptism in the New Testament. Mm. And of course, we cover this in insurgence. But baptism is that funeral where you mm. are dying yeah, to yeah, the world yeah, system. Yeah. You're pulling out of it. And there's that break mm. with the world, coming Amen. out of the world, right? Yeah, yeah. But we still rub elbows with the world, right? It's inevitable. We're on the earth. Yes. You know, the world yeah. system's here. Yes. So it's inevitable that we are going to collect the dust. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we're no longer clean. Yes. Now, of course, if, if a person has a controversy with God, they're living in sin or they're participating in sin, right? Yes, yes. Or they've allowed the world to possess a part of them. Mm -hmm. Then that needs to be repented of. Yes. And the blood of Christ cleanses. Amen. But this business of foot washing, it's not about sin. It, yeah. You know, you get dust on your feet. You haven't yeah. sinned. It's just that gravitational pull mm. that pulls your spirit down yeah. because you have now been part of that fallen human civilization. You've yeah. touched it. Let's say that. You've touched it. Mm -hmm. You've come in contact with it. And it grieves and it pulls. And uh, that's why we need one another. This that's is right. why the Christian right. life is not a solo project. That's right. You know, wash one another's feet. Well, if you're just trying to be a Christian by yourself, even if you go to Sunday morning church service and sit in a pew and listen to the sermon and raise your hand and sing some songs with the worship team and throw money in an offering plate, that's not washing your feet. Amen. You need the encouragement of the brethren. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Of course, if the sermon's good, that could do that. It could <laughs> and, do that. Yeah. yeah. If the sermon's good, that can do that. But nothing replaces that one on one or fellowship with other believers mm. face to face, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's why we stress the kingdom cell because 
that's one of the places where you get it. That's right. That's right. You get that it face-to-face does. fellowship. Yeah. Well, we had it for the last four days here. Yeah, yeah. In Orlando yeah. at the uh, yeah. Deeper Christian Life Conference. That's People right. from all over the world. And I believe the chapter on hospitality is called Taking Care of Jesus Christ. Okay. And it has to do with the fact that when we care for one another in the body of Christ, mm-hmm. we're caring for Jesus himself. Ooh, amen. Yeah, and that's amen. the point of that chapter in the book Insurgents. All right, folks. Well, till next time, we will talk to you on the other side of another episode of the Insurgents Podcast. Adios. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the Insurgents Podcast and give it a five-star review on iTunes. This will help others find it. Also, you can join Frank's unfiltered email list at frankviola.org and receive encouragement, challenges, and insights connected to the gospel of the kingdom. Remember, the insurgence has begun. Don't miss it.